So welcome everybody. Uh, we are restarting our seminar channel and uh, after a small semester break. And uh, today's speaker is Amitav Virmani. And it's very nice. it's a great pleasure to have him here. And uh, he will be talking basically about black hole entropy and issues about how to reproduce black hole entropy from string theory in a special class of string theory models. And for that, you have to care about something called hair removal. So I will leave it to Amitav to explain that, all of that. And uh, yeah, over to you, Amitav. Uh, thanks, Ayan. Um, so let me start by thanking Ayan and Suresh for inviting me to give this talk. Uh, so the title of my talk is Black Hole Hair Removal for N equal to 4 CHL models. I will try to explain various uh, words and phrases uh, in this uh, title. So uh, this is the uh, outline of my talk. Uh, I will spend more than half of my talk on the first two points. Um, uh, and this is something Ian suggested me to do. Um, I, will, I will try to explain the introduction motivation and I will review the previous work on this subject. And then I will discuss the supergravity analysis. Um, then the uh, less than half of my talk will be on the last three points. So here I will discuss uh, the hair removal puzzle for the CHL models and uh, the resolution of the puzzle uh, that we have uh, given. And summary and I will end with the summary and feature direction. Actually, the last part of my uh, my slides are very uh, uh, quick. So this summary and feature direction is only one or two slides. One or two slides. Okay, so let me start. Uh, so uh, this project uh, grew out of uh, Chennai Strings Meetings uh, discussions in 2018. And this is based on a paper we did with uh, uh, Shubhranil Chakrabarti, uh, Suresh, uh, Govind Rajan, Yogesh Srivastav, and uh, Shanmuga Pia. So Shanmuga Pia just joined. Um, I have put her name in red because uh, she's the one who worked the, the hardest on this uh, project. Uh, ours is one of those rare papers where all three Chennai institutes have collaborated. And there is a concurrent paper by uh, Aradita Chattopadhyay and Justin David. Okay, um, so um, um, uh, let me start with uh, some uh, basic statements about uh, black hole here. And it will be very nice if uh, students and uh, uh, other people interact. Uh, I, I have tried to prepare the talk so that it is understandable to the younger people. This is what the Ian had suggested me to do. So John Wheeler famously made the statement that uh, black holes have no hair. And uh, this statement can be made more formal um, by, by coming up with the, the so-called no hair theorems. Uh, so uh, what these theorems say is that uh, in the presence of uh, no matter content uh, other than Maxwell fields, uh, the black hole is completely specified by a uh, few parameters, mass, electric charge, spin, uh, and uh, things like those. Um, there are many refinement of this statement. One can prove a no hair theorem for a, a specific matter field, like uh, for example, with a scalar field or in uh, um, uh, slightly more complicated theories of uh, gravity with scalar potential and things like those. Uh, but, but it is known that there are systems which admit uh, black hole here. Okay. Um, and in particular for more complicated setups, uh, where we have collusive line directions, or we have uh, form fields, or we have fermion fields in our system, then uh, black hole here are possible. Uh, e e even, even if you don't allow for these, I mean, even if you think that these are very exotic things, uh, even with the uh, more, uh, more sort of less, less exotic things, uh, black hole here are possible. Uh, like Broca field in Kerr black hole, for example, give rise to hair. Um, uh, so in our so so then this raises the question: What do we mean by black hole here, and uh, how do we quantify them? So in our context, uh, black hole here is defined to be uh, to be uh, smooth, normalizable, bosonic, or fermionic perturbation, fermionic degree of freedom that lives uh, entirely outside the horizon. It should not have any support. Uh, uh, it should have support outside the horizon. Uh, so, uh, so as I was mentioning uh, just a few minutes ago, many methods exist for constructing black hole here, and it's a big subject in uh, general relativity. There are hundreds and hundreds of papers on, on this topic. Okay. 
so um, the question that we are interested in um, is not the, the the big construction of black hole here or all possible black hole here. Uh, we are interested in it from the point of view of black hole entropy. So the black hole entropy in terms of microscopic degree of freedom uh, is uh, insensitive to the nature of the solution far away uh, from the horizon. Um, because you calculate the area of the horizon in some sense and the area of the horizon doesn't uh, care so much about uh, what is happening far away uh, from the horizon. So uh, that's... Mithaf, can I ask something very yes. basic yes, about yes. the hair? So yeah. uh, do, when you say that uh, it, it is it is re residing outside the horizon, what do you mean exactly? Is it, Firstly, it is not infalling, but is it supported on the horizon or it has zero support on the horizon? Uh, yeah, so actually the hair that we will construct, they will have zero support at the horizon. Uh, and uh, the derivatives of uh, various quantities. So for example, if the hair leads to a metric perturbation, um, then the metric perturbation will die down at the horizon and uh, all the derivatives will be smooth uh, at the horizon. So this is what we mean by the by the black hole here. But, but, as, you were, yeah, but as I was saying, this is a big subject. There are multiple notions of uh, black hole horizon, uh, black hole here. And the, the notion that I will be using is, uh, is this, that smooth, normalizable, bosonic and fermionic perturbation that lives outside the horizon. So you mean it is, if, if you think in terms of uh, like the metric perturbations, uh, these hair is uh, going to pause. If you look at the full nonlinear solution with these things, uh, then uh, the near horizon boundary conditions would not be altered by the back reaction. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Actually, we will, we will exactly, we will be able to solve our equations exactly, and we will see that that uh, a near horizon okay. region is uh, not altered. Uh, by so this. basically, if the horizon has any charge, it's not going to change those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The horizon, the horizon, yeah, exactly. The horizon charges will not change. Yeah, will not change. But then, uh, then, uh, then this is not what usually people mean by hair. I mean, it's something like, because hair people mean usually like things that can actually live on the horizon sort of, but this is not what you mean. It means something more, something in intermediate between the asymptotic region and the black hole horizon geometry that, yeah. that lives somewhere there. Okay, yeah, exactly. I exactly. see. So, okay, so, yeah. so yeah, this is the reason I was saying there are many notions of black hole horizon and uh, many methods to constructing such hairs. So it's, it's a big subject. So what we mean by black hole hair is precisely this, that the smooth normalizable uh, uh, perturbations living outside the horizon. Yeah. Okay. So, so given this discussion, uh, if uh, two different black holes have identical near horizon geometries, uh, then we expect to have um, the, the same uh, microscopic degeneracy for the two uh, black holes. And there is a very well uh, studied and very well understood counter example, apparent counter example of this. This is uh, BMPV black hole in flat space and in uh, top net space. Um, uh, both these black holes, um, that is BMPV black hole in flat space as well as BMPV black hole in top net space have the same identical near horizon geometries. Um, but if one goes about computing the microscopic indices, then one finds that the two answers are, are not the same. Um, so, and these authors, uh, Banerjee, Mandal, and Sen, uh, Navamita Banerjee, Ipshita Mandal, and Ashok Sen, and uh, they, these authors, uh, Jatkar, Sen, and Srivastava, uh, in 2009, uh, they proposed a resolution of this uh, conundrum and they called it uh, hair removal. Um, and motivated by this work, um, uh, we study hair removal for uh, a more general class of CHL models. Okay, so in the next few slides, uh, I will review what uh, Sen et al. Uh, did. And uh, I will explain the setup that I am interested in. Uh, and then I will explain the, the, the gravity calculations that we have done. Okay, so uh, here is a bit more detail about the work of uh, Sen et al. So in 2009, these authors, uh, showed that uh, the difference between 4D and 5D microscopic indices for 4D and 5D BMPV black hole can be accounted by the hair modes. Um, in these papers, the, the rotation of the black hole was not treated in sufficient detail. And in our paper, we put in a lot of computational effort to fill in this gap. Uh, this is not just a calculational uh, calculational step, there are some conceptual issues also involved uh, with the rotation. And uh, uh, that's one of the reasons we spent so much time discussing uh, the rotation. 
Um, but let me just make a comment here that uh, uh, the younger people may not know this. So the, the BMPV black hole is a, a rotating supersymmetric black hole. And uh, the fact that a rotating supersymmetric black hole exists was a big surprise when this solution was discovered uh, in the uh, late 90s. And uh, like, uh, if you read uh, Hawking and Ellis or some, some GR book of that type, uh, they, you will find statements that all rotating black holes have ergo regions. And because they have ergo regions, uh, it seems impossible to construct uh, 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 construct supersymmetric black hole solution. But when these authors constructed, it was a big surprise. Um, and, and since then, the BMBV black hole has been, uh, has been a topic of discussion in a variety of contexts in uh, black hole physics. Okay. Um, so uh, the other thing that these authors this did, uh, Banerjee, Mandel, Jatkar, Sen, and Srivastava, they only looked at the simplest model, uh, that is a K3 compactification of type 2b. Um, uh, what we do is that we look at a wider class of uh, n equal to four models, and uh, the generalization is uh, is non-trivial. We spend a lot of time uh, working on this project. It's uh, I think it's highly non-trivial, the generalization. Okay. So let me say a few things about the models that we are interested in and uh, uh, the things that we do. So um, we are interested in theories with n equal to four supersymmetry. Uh, so exact calculation of microscopic indices are possible for these theories. And uh, this subject has seen enormous progress uh, over the year. Actually, this is not one of those hot topics uh, these days because uh, almost all the progress was done, uh, good amount of progress was done uh, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, uh, CHL model uh, provides a rich arena for, for such discussion. Um, the simplest calculation can be generalized to a wider class of models. And uh, I mean, it, it brings in a lot of new physics, new details and so on. So this is a topic of uh, uh, much discussion, uh, rich, uh, uh, rich subject. Uh, for a class of CHL model, um, the black hole solutions can be described in terms of uh, six dimensional uh, two comma zero supergravity. Um, I will explain what this uh, two comma zero supergravity is, uh, coupled to uh, uh, a number of tensor multiplets. Okay, so the 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 setup is uh, is uh, purely gravity um, in a sense. Uh, the only thing that is changing is the number of tensor multiplets. Okay, so the CHL models for the first part of the talk you can use them as as uh, some six dimensional gravity theory coupled to some number of uh, fields. Okay, and it is sufficient to look at this theory and uh, uh, and construct the associated uh, here modes, and this is what um, the the first part of the of the talk will be about. Okay, so let me now um, uh, explain what this uh, uh, two comma zero supergravity is. So six dimensional two comma zero supergravity is uh, uh, is a, a, a fairly complicated <laughs> theory of gravity. Uh, it has, uh, uh, I mean, for any supergravity, it has a bosonic sector and fermionic sector. The bosonic sector consists of uh, the metric, uh, the self-dual fields, and uh, the anti-self-dual fields, um, self-dual two-form fields, anti-self-dual two-form fields, and a number of scalars. Okay, so both these fields play an important role. Uh, uh, the BMPV black hole is charged under one of the self-dual fields, and all the hairs will be charged under the, uh, the anti self dual field. So both these fields play an important role. Um, uh, the theory has fermionic sector. Uh, fermionic sector has uh, gravity nodes and uh, uh, Majorana fermions. Okay. Uh, the gravity nodes, uh, th these are theories with uh, 16 supersymmetries. So the total number of uh, gravity node components is, uh, is 16 and there are lots of Majorana fermions. Okay. Uh, the, the, the solutions that we consider, uh, we consider simplest set of solutions, so to say, where we set all the scalars to constants. So, uh, so, so we don't have to worry about the scalars at least. Uh, and all the spin half fermions to zero. So we don't have to worry about the Majorana fermions uh, either. Okay, and all the solutions that we look at, they preserve uh, quarter, um, they are called quarter BPS objects. They preserve, uh, uh, four supersymmetries out of the 16 supercharges of the, of the theory. Okay, so this is the setup uh, that uh, uh, we will be uh, interested in. So, so now- So Amitabh, you will, you will be worried about the gravity nodes because yeah, we yeah. don't set them to zero. 
yeah 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 so yeah this is this was my next sentence so we will start with the black hole solution which has metric and cell dual field one of the cell dual field turn on then we will look for perturbations here uh, where the metric field is changed or the anti cell dual fields are changed or the gravitino fields are changed uh, this is what we will do yeah exactly okay so questions comments uh, on, uh, on this part so far Okay, so if not, uh, so let me continue. So the aim is to construct black hole here, and uh, uh, and in particular, which here to to cut or remove. Um, so we will be discussing uh, a class of here. Actually, discussing all possible here is uh, is uh, is hard. Is uh, perhaps futile. It's not even known how to have such a discussion. Um, but what we will do is that we will construct a class of here. And uh, based on these class of here, we will be able to show that uh, the matching happens. So the matching will be able to, we will be able to uh, show that the matching happen only with this class of here. Okay. What do you mean by matching? Matching between 4D and, so you see, I started the talk by saying that the 4D and 5D, ah, okay, I see. the microscopic indices are not the same. And the idea is that we construct here on both these uh, black holes. And show that once we remove the contribution from the hair, then the 4D and 5D partition functions match. So that is the. the okay, idea. okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. okay, so for the two black holes that we will study, uh, we will only study three types of hair. Um, this itself is very complicated. And actually, we don't know how to construct other classes of hair. So, uh, so these are the only three classes we know. And we will see that these classes are enough uh, for our discussion. So there is something called Garfinkel Vachaspati here. Um, then um, uh, form field here and uh, uh, fermion here. So, so I want to emphasize that for all these three cases, uh, we have a full nonlinear study. Um, uh, but uh, but this study that the way I will present it will look linear. Um, but uh, but this study is fully nonlinear um, in the sense that uh, once you do the linear analysis, you can um, uh, go back and argue things uh, in a in a very useful way. And uh, uh, and convince yourself that everything works at the nonlinear level. So uh, so so these are the three types of hairs that I will uh, discuss. Okay. So let me uh, let me give a, a one slide summary of the work of Sen et al. And this will um, uh, set the stage for the rest of the discussion. Okay. So what these authors did is uh, they looked at a BMPV black hole in flat space, which is represented by this disk. And flat space is represented by this uh, uh, square in this uh, diagram uh, versus the BMPV black hole in top net space. So BMPV black hole in top net space is uh, sitting at the center of the top net. And then there is this uh, top net space. The difference between flat space and top net space in this setup is that uh, one of the circles in the top net case is, uh, is S1. Uh, one, one of the direction is S1 uh, at infinity. And as you come, uh, near the black hole, the, the S1 circle smoothly shrinks to zero size, uh, and uh, and we get uh, uh, we, we get a black hole sitting at the uh, center of the BMPV. Okay, so the difference between uh, these two. Uh, may I ask something? Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, this this razor that you're talking of, five D versus four D, is it uh, is it just simply the supergravity entropy, or or something no, even beyond no, no. that? No, no, no. So this is uh, this is the the full microscopic partition function. So he so this slide in this slide I'm talking about the full microscopic partition function. Yeah. So let, let me just finish. So what I was saying is that uh, there are these wavy lines which uh, I have drawn here. So these lines represent the hair on the uh, BMPV black hole in top net, and uh, these um, here are. Um, are, are, are possible essentially because of the top net geometry. So there are some features of the top net geometry that allow uh, for these uh, here to exist. So I, I'm Can not- Can I make a comment, Amita? Yes, yes. Yeah. So the point is that these hair are not hair in 4D. I mean, they are like part of them, right? They're in not... the 4D, if you look at it as a 4D model, there's no hair there, right? So. So the numerator on the right hand side is the full partition function of the 4D model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. 
okay uh, uh, okay yeah so by 5d partition function i mean uh, 5d partition function calculated by a microscopic theory at infinity and by 4d partition function what i mean is the 4d partition function calculated at infinity and um, since these blue lines is the difference between these two pictures, the idea is that if you sort of remove the blue lines, that is the here partition function from 4D partition function, then uh, the two things uh, uh, will come to agree. And this is this is what this is a one slide summary of uh, what these authors did. Okay, so maybe Suresh, did, did I say it correctly, or you want to say something else? No, no, fine. No, no, no nothing. It's just like I was just repeating. You. In a slightly different fashion, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I say I have a question to both of you. It's already uh, this picture, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you don't mind. Uh, suppose I uh, I go to the super gravity limit, right? In both cases, right? Yeah. So on the left hand side, I find simply the Bekenstein Hawking entropy. And on the right hand side, I will probably find uh, the Bekenstein Hawking entropy yeah. uh, factored with some, uh, some contribution the, from the solution. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, 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 we can Hello, hear you. We lost you. Uh, Amitav can hear me, right? Yes. Oh, I no, I think, my, uh, yeah, I think my internet connection was up. Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, okay, so the question was that in the super gravity limit, how to see this? It's on the left-hand side is simply the Bekenstein Hawking entropy and right-hand side is Bekenstein Hawking entropy times the contribution of the hair, right? Is it correct? No, is no, it no. true that? No, so so by supergravity limit, I guess you mean the the, the simple two derivative supergravity limit. So in that case, the two black holes have identical near horizon geometry. That was that is the puzzle. So the two black holes have identical near horizon geometry. So when you calculate the area of the black hole on the two pictures, you will find exactly the same answers. Oh, in the supergravity uh, thing, they they agree exactly yeah, in the yeah. supergravity limit. Yeah. Ah, okay, and but but in the but in what you're saying now in the uh, so the question is how to lift it to string theory. Yeah, if you can, uh, uh, if you calculate the full uh, 5D microscopic partition function and the full 4D microscopic partition function, then there seem to be. Uh, uh, ah, okay. Extra I see. And uh, and the aim is to understand whether we can understand this extra contribution as uh, super gravity hair modes, whether we can construct the super gravity hair mode, which are but. But isn't it a little bit surprising because uh, asymptotic theories uh, are different and has a larger dimension, yet the other one has more modes? Well, it depends on how you look. So if you zoom in this region, then the picture on the left-hand side becomes the picture on the right-hand side. But the extra circle has shrunk, so it's exactly a 4D. No, no, no. So, no, 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 not that way. So, anyway, I mean, it's, oh, okay. you cannot, you cannot get rid of this direction. You have to, you have to work with this direction. I mean, you cannot get rid of it. Um, keeping the dimension of S1 fixed at infinity, uh, you zoom in near the center of the top nut. If you zoom near the center of the top nut, then the picture on the right will become picture on the left. Oh, so both have the same near horizon geometry after all. It's just a... Uh... Exactly. Is so, this the asymptotic thing that is different on both sides? So that's the idea. So, ah, the, okay. so the hairs are here are the the wavy lines are the hair which are sort of supported in the in the bulk of the top nut geometry, if you wish. No, I'm just trying to answer a very naive question. Ask a very naive question. What is what is this uh, thing from the from the asymptotic theory point of view? Is it like a duality or uh, how the how did how do the asymptotic theory would see yeah, yeah. them? So asymptotic theory will see them as a, a difference in the closure line charges. So the first setup does not have the KK monopole charge, whereas the second the second setup has, uh, um, I mean, in the, the example that I will work with will have one unit of KK monopole charge. So here we are discussing string theory of the D1, D5 brain system. Here we are discussing string theory of D1, D5 KK monopole system. I understand, but uh, then how, how, how does the asymptotic, theory, from the asymptotic point of view, what are the pair? I mean, just if I give you, if I, if I know the string theory, I don't know the supergravity. If I just know the microstates. I, I mean, sorry, so, from the from the from dual uh, from the asymptotic. What should what what I should call here? So uh, there are certain degrees of freedom associated with the motion of the D one D five brain system, um, and then there are certain ways in which some of those charges you can distribute on the closure line monopole also. So. Um, because
because of this uh, extra extra uh, distribution that is allowed on the kk monopole you will get extra contribution to the to the partition function in 4d so okay, I see. So there are more degrees of freedom in the microscopic picture here also. And yeah. there is a, because I was of the notion that somehow the microscopic partition function doesn't see that at all, uh, that this hair at all. But that's not true, you're saying that microscopic partition function also sees the hair, but uh, but then there is a, some notion of the hair even in the D, even if I look at it from the D-brain point, point of view. Uh, you no, know, from the not from yeah, microscopic first statement i completely agree the microscopic part, part, partition function knows about the hair and the aim of this project or the aim of, the aim of this senatol work was to see the hair modes in the supergravity description yeah but the question was whether there's hair modes something like hair modes in the microscopic picture also in the weak coupling limit when you have the debrains yeah yeah actually the, uh, the phrase hair there is a bit uh, is difficult to quantify. Yeah. Like, how, how, what do we mean by in, uh, in hindsight? Yeah, in hindsight, we in can hindsight, say things. Yes. yes. But, yeah. But when you do a micro see, but conditions, you will not be able to. Yeah, this is what puzzles me because if you have a hair, def a definition of the hair in the supergravity picture, if I just go back to the weak coupling picture, when I have a deep brain, I cannot isolate the hair. So that looks a little puzzle to me. Like, then, no, then this see. notion. No, 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 no. Okay. You will see. You will see it has some well defined. Okay. Yeah. It has a well defined explanation in terms of. Uh, yeah. Okay. Process. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If if you keep this picture in mind, then the explanation comes out. You see, if you if you keep this picture in mind, that if you zoom in near the center of the of the top nut, and the picture becomes like this, uh, then the interpretation on the microscopic side also will come out uh, naturally. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, thank you for all this uh, discussion. So now I will explain the supergravity analysis. And uh, 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 as I was saying, a lot of my talk will be on this. Uh, okay, so although in our paper, we have spent approximately 30 pages discussing <laughs> the rotating BMP weak lace, uh, rotating BMP weak lace, uh, in this talk, I will keep things simple and I will only discuss the non rotating uh, BMP weak lace. Okay, so uh, five dimensional non rotating BMPV black hole looks like uh, this. Um, actually, the phrase BMPV is a bit, a bit of a misnomer here. It should be called Strominger of a, a black hole, but anyway. Uh, so, five dimensional BMPV black hole is um, so uh, it is uh, the way I have written this. This is a six dimensional object. Six coordinates are UV and uh, WIs. WIs are the four coordinates. So, this is the flat space part, it's a four dimensional flat space part. Uh, and u and v are defined like this. So u is x5 minus t, v is x5 plus t. Uh, uh, and um, so you see the metric uh, is, uh, is uh, fairly simple. Uh, there is no uh, u square term, nothing depends on u and v also. Um, now some of you might have seen this metric uh, where the function psi of r goes as uh, one over r squared. Uh, but I want to emphasize that uh, our coordinates are different. So the, the R uh, coordinate here is roughly the square root, uh, roughly the square of the, of, the, of the radial coordinate that you will construct uh, from the Ws, okay? So our uh, R is like uh, W1 squared plus W2 squared plus W3 squared plus W4 squared, okay? So, some, some factor, numerical factor also in fact. Okay, the reason for using this uh, slightly funny uh, coordinate is to make a connection to the four dimensional BMPV black hole. A four dimensional BMPV black hole is simply the same metric, except you replace this, uh, this four dimensional flat space part with the four dimensional top net metric. Okay, so the top net metric is, uh, uh, many of you might have seen this. So this is, uh, 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 like a vibration of uh, the circle over one of the coordinates of the uh, of the s uh, s three in this case, and uh, what you have is uh, uh, this function multiplying here, the inverse function multiplying here, and then you have uh, this uh, this uh, structure. Okay, so in this uh, the chi r function goes as one over r, and we want to we want to make use of this one over r in a very crucial way. That's why we use this funny coordinates uh, in the uh, in the 5D case also, and we uh, use this one over in, 
one over r in the five t case also. Okay, so in both these cases, the psi function is the same. The only difference is that we just replace this uh, four dimensional metric with this uh, uh, top net uh, metric. Okay, so this function chi specifies the top net uh, uh, space. Um, as I was saying, so it has this one over r part, which will play the most important role. And then it has this constant factor, um, which in the limit r going to zero disappears. As you can see in the limit r going to zero, this is the term that dominates, and this factor sort of becomes irrelevant. Um, I, mean, the, uh, I have a quick question about nomenclature. I mean, they, they're both five dimensional, no? Yeah. I mean, you just yeah, replaced yeah. one D metric with another 4D metric. So, <laughs> actually, uh, the metrics I have written, they are both um, six dimensional uh, because right. I have two V. Um, v yeah. yeah. So, what I mean by uh, by five versus four is that so this, the first metric is asymptotically flat in five dimensions, and this metric is asymptotically flat in four dimensions. That's what I mean. Asymptotically locally flat. Some people make a distinction between asymptotically top net, asymptotically flat, whatever. So, asymp but in, in naive sense, the second black hole is uh, asymptotically flat in four dimensions, whereas the first one is asymptotically flat in five dimensions. So, that is the difference. And that's why the names uh, 4D and 5D. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, so as I was saying, in the limit r going to zero, the the this detail uh, does not matter, and then um, uh, uh, then one can see uh, straightforwardly that uh, the two black holes have identical uh, near horizon uh, geometry. It, it still requires a little bit of a calculation, but uh, but the calculations are easy. Um, the two black holes. I mean, one can one can almost see it from here. Um, that uh, the two, two, two black holes have identical uh, near horizon geometries. Okay, so any comments, questions on this part? On this part? So, did, did I answer your question? Uh, yes, I think I need to read more. That's all. Don't worry about it. <laughs> So Amitav, you are just saying that the asymptotically one is uh, the asymptotic nature of one is simply five D square flat space, and the other one has an extra circle of yeah. fixed radius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, so this this picture might really help. So, uh, uh, so if we use the R coordinate and um, uh, and don't worry about uh, don't worry about uh, this factor at all, uh, then the picture that we get is this, and this is asymptotically flat in five dimensions. And if we worry about uh, that factor. Uh, this uh, four over r four squared factor, uh, then we see that uh, it becomes uh, asymptotically Kaluza Klein. And uh, um, if you go to infinity and try to get rid of this circle, then it will be asymptotically four dimensional, asymptotically flat in four dimensions. So that's the okay. Okay, so so now let me uh, discuss the the here. Um, so I will call them here candidates <laughs> because this is actually easier to explain. Uh, but we will see later that uh, this does not turn out to be a proper here, but uh, but the construction is easier to explain in this case, and, yeah, and this is how I will start. Okay, so so there is something called Garfinkel Vachaspati transform. Uh, this is a very famous uh, solution generating technique. Um, very famously, the Dhabolkar Harvey string states were constructed using uh, this transform, and uh, uh, a lot of the initial fuzzball solutions were also constructed uh, using this uh, uh, transform. And uh, originally, this transform was used for something else, uh, for cosmic strings and things like this. So uh, this is a, a, a solution generating technique which adds wave-like deformations on a, on a metric. Uh, uh, and if, since we are working with the black hole, it adds wave-like deformations on a, on a black hole. Okay, so given a known solution, we apply this transform, we get a new exact solution. Okay, uh, the, the, the technique does not always work. It requires uh, certain conditions to be satisfied. And these conditions are not completely obvious. Like there are some, some there are many systems don't satisfy this, uh, this, uh, this requirement. Okay, so uh, the requirements are that uh, we must identify a killing vector. We must identify a vector, uh, which is null, uh, hypersurface orthogonal and killing. Typically, what happens is that uh, in supersymmetric solutions, you will find null killing vectors, but uh, these vectors will, will often not be hypersurface orthogonal, and then you will not be able to use this technique. So this is, uh, uh, this is a technical point. Um, so um, 
so once so for our for for the two black holes that we have discussed one can identify such vectors and one can transform the metric uh, uh, like so so this is the original metric uh, gmn sorry so this cursor is not working properly so gmn is the original metric and the new metric is g prime and uh, 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 we have to we, we add this function t uh, t is the function that satisfies box uh, t equal to 0 and it is compatible with the uh, killing symmetries so t t also uh, does not depend on the coordinate uh, that we have chosen uh, to be the the killing vector okay so um, uh, so can we use this to construct here uh, so we work with partial u um, this this is hypersurface orthogonal and it adds uh, deformation uh, to the to the metric and the deformation is independent of u deformation is independent of u this is what i was saying here that uh, we choose k to be uh, partial u and the deformation turns out to be uh, independent of u okay so new, the new solution that one finds has the same um, uh, null killing vector um, it's just a property of this uh, transformation and it adds uh, a deformation only to the GVV component of the metric. So we can see this. Um, so let me go back. So you see the metric only has cross terms, which is in U and V. And if we choose the killing vector to be partial U, then uh, K M lower, K lower M will be only V. Uh, and since it is only V, if you do K M, K N, you will only have deformation in the VV uh, component. And this is what happens. You only find that there is a there is a deformation in the VV component uh, of the metric. And the VV component deformation is uh, just uh, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some function uh, T which solves this uh, box uh, equal to zero. And there are some details about how the size was come, which I'm not explaining. Okay. So, so Amitam, very, very, very brief question. Is it like putting some deformation on the outgoing uh, part? Uh, actually, is oh. it not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it is not outgoing and ingoing. Um, you see, my U and V coordinates are related to this X5 coordinate. Uh, so X5 is the circle coordinate which is uh, which on which the brains are wrapping. Uh, so it is ingoing. It is like left moving and right moving rather than ingoing and outgoing. Uh, ingoing and outgoing would be like if you use one of these coordinates, but we are not using one of these. We are using the the U and V. Okay, but this part du dv, if you just look at this two dimensional part, ah, sorry, this is not. So r is something else. Yeah, sorry. yeah. So the r, yeah, this is what I'm saying. The r we are not using. So, so. Ah, I mean, okay, sorry. Yeah. I, I understand. Yeah, these are. But why are you starting from the 5D? Uh, you should have started for the 4D, right? I mean, that's you're adding hair to the 4D. Well, okay. So you see, these are. Okay, so I have to go back to the, the this picture again. So you see th this picture, the hair, the hair are not necessarily 4D hair. I mean, it's not like, I mean, it's not like the hair only lives in 4D. The the hair is sort of propagating in uh, dominant space, uh, which is in- Oh, five. sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. I was just thinking, I was just, my, my question was very, uh, whether you're adding hair now to the 5D, you're adding hair to the 4D only, right? So, oh, oh, so that's oh, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. So actually, okay. So one more comment. <laughs> so this picture is a bit naive. So you can think of some sort of red hair acting on the uh, red hair, like sort of attached. Yeah, the red hair or blue hair, something attached uh, on both sides also. So you can, I mean, this is the main idea, but, uh, but there can be some hair on the 4D side as well as uh, on the 5D side as well as on the 4D side. And, uh, uh, and, and and you will see that the main the main contribution is coming from these blue wavy lines, but there are some contributions from the left hand side also. Like there are some hair modes on this also. There are some hair extra hair modes on this also, uh, but the main contribution is explained by this uh, blue wavy lines. Okay. 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 So thank you for all these questions. Um, okay. So now. Um, uh, so we have to now we have to find this function t. Okay, so uh, this goes back to the earlier work of uh, uh, Kellen, Harvey, Dabolkar, and other people. Um, uh, what they showed is that uh, if you take this function t to be linear uh, function in the the Cartesian coordinates, then somewhat surprisingly the metric still preserves the asymptotic flatness. 
Um, th this looks a bit surprising how this happens, but uh, uh, but in order to explain this, I have to do some calculations, which I will not do. Uh, but this is this turns out to be the general story that uh, the 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 solutions that one can seek for this uh, Laplacian of t acting on equal Laplacian of t equal to zero are the solutions which are linear in the Cartesian coordinates. And if you work with these linear Cartesian coordinates, then one can do some changes of coordinates and uh, show that. Uh, uh, the 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 new metric is asymptotically flat, and uh, and the uh, the functions that we have added they represents they represent momentum states bound to the original brain configuration. Okay, this is a famous work by uh, by the whole Kathapi and uh, Callan and other people. <laughs> okay, so there are so so because there are four these W coordinates, there are four arbitrary functions f i that one can add, and all these functions are periodic in the in the v coordinate. Okay, so this was the discussion for the fermionic. Uh, this was the discussion for the Garfinkel versus Pati hair modes. Now let us talk about the fermionic hair modes. Um, so fermionic hair modes, uh, we solve the fermionic sector equations of motion as Ian was asking, and we solve it for the deformations of the gravitines. Um, we work with the uh, undeformed uh, background. That is to say, we work with the simple metric that I showed. And at this stage, we exclude the GV modes in the metric. Uh, but as I was saying, once you construct the mode solutions, you can go back and correct them and convince yourself that everything works at the nonlinear level. So, so I will not explain those things. I mean, those things are in our paper uh, and also discussed uh, to some extent in sense paper. Okay, so the claim is that um, uh, these are valid solutions one can find these, uh, so one finds this uh, uh, solutions for the undeformed solutions, and these are valid solution even in the presence of the deformations, and these are solutions to nonlinear equations, in fact. Okay, so now uh, how to solve the gravity in equation? This looks like a messy, messy thing to do. Gravity in equations are, are messy. Okay, it turns out that one can make a, the simplest possible and thus, simplest possible. So really you set all the components of the gravity need to zero, uh, except for the V component. So psi alpha V is the only one quantity that you solve for. And even for that quantity, you solve it such that it is compatible with the killing symmetry. So you solve it such that it is independent of you. Okay, so this is as simple as it can get. Um, so to begin with, it's a complicated fermionic equation, but then you simplify it as much uh, as possible by making these and thus. And once you make these and thus, one can solve the equation. They become simple partial differential. I mean, simple differential equations which one can solve. And uh, uh, and one finds that uh, there are two types of solutions one finds. Uh, one solution that goes as minus three half, one solution that goes as minus one half, and some constant spinners which come uh, along with it. Okay, so, so, so these are four component spinners. Uh, so it appears that one has eight possible uh, hair modes, uh, four for each one of them, but we will see that uh, these are the candidates. We will see they are not all good. So four of them uh, will not be good, uh, but uh, at this stage we find eight, eight such solutions. Okay, so questions, comments uh, on the, so now I have finished the, the hair mode construction for 5D black holes. Now I will talk about the 4D black holes. So you will explain what are good and bad here? Yeah, yeah, I will explain this, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay questions from the uh, from the students? I did not hear so far anything from the students. Okay, so let me continue. Uh, so now the, exactly the same discussion applied to uh, bosonic uh, 4D uh, here candidates. Uh, we apply exactly the same technology. We identify a null killing vector, a U independent perturbation. The, the formulas are exactly the same, uh, except now uh, because, um, um, uh, because uh, remember in the top net metric, we, we had to separate out this uh, X4 coordinate. So we separate out the X4 coordinate and uh, we concentrate only on the three dimensional uh, three-dimensional flat space part. So T comma Y, uh, where Y is Y1, Y2, Y3, these are the three-dimensional flat space part. Okay, and uh, once again, to make things as simple as possible, uh, we choose things which are independent of the of the uh, X4 uh, top net uh, circle. 
and then the wave equation just becomes uh, 3D transverse uh, space wave equation. And once again, by this uh, double Kerr-Harvey uh, construction, only the linear functions uh, are, uh, are important. Uh, uh, these are the functions which preserve asymptotic flatness and represent uh, bound states uh, of, uh, of momentum to the brains. So, so we find that there are three arbitrary functions with the periodic coordinates in E. Okay, so now this is the major detail. Uh, so uh, this is uh, where uh, a lot of uh, the lot of the uh, hair come from, uh, and this is what is represented by those blue wavy lines. Okay, so here we are talking about deformations of the harmonic fields, harmonic form fields uh, of the top net space. Um, okay, so let me let me explain. So here we are looking at the tensor multiplet sector for the first time. Um, and uh, as I said, uh, in our theories, there are NT uh, tensor multiplets. So we are looking at deformations corresponding to these tensor multiplets. Uh, it so happens um, that this is a property of a top net, of the top net space. Top net space is equipped with the self-dual harmonic two form called omega Tn. And one can construct a NT self-dual deformation by, uh, by this. So one takes delta H NT self-dual is uh, HS um, dV wedge omega Tn. So omega Tn is the harmonic two form on the top net space. We wedge it with uh, dV. And this uh, uh, simple construction is enough uh, to, to give an anti self dual deformation. Okay, since on flat space, no such form is there, one cannot do this on flat space. So in for the five dimensional case, one cannot do this construction, but from the top net case, one can do this construction. Okay, so, so this is also the first place where nonlinearities are important. So if you turn on this deformation for the anti self dual uh, form field, you must also deform the metric. Uh, the metric deformation turns out to be uh, quadratic in this uh, H, because remember the Einstein's equations are like uh, R mu nu is equal to H, H, uh, H squared uh, roughly. Maxwell equation, I mean, Einstein Maxwell equations are like R mu nu equal to F mu nu, F mu nu. So uh, th these equations are also of that type. So uh, so you have to do the square of these uh, these things, and the and and as a result, the uh, the change in the metric is uh, uh, proportional to uh, I mean only in the v v direction. So only the GVV component changes, and the change is quadratic in in H. Okay. So so these both these I mean. The, the deformed solution or uh, both these uh, uh, deformed fields are characterized by the uh, nt number of uh, arbitrary functions of v. So this is where the most of the, the, the hair are coming from. And this is what I had schematically represented as these blue uh, wavy lines. Okay, so this is the main, uh, main, main, main slide, uh, if you wish, uh, from the hair point of view. Okay. So the fermionic here, uh, the fermionic here, again, we must uh, carry through the same exercise. We solve the same set of equations. And as before, we find the same set of here, uh, phi 1 and phi 2. Actually, it turns out that top net space does not have any effect on the fermionic deformation at all. The equations are identical. Um, the, if you have done the calculation for the 5D case, the 4D case calculation is just uh, uh, less than one hour of work. Like it, it, it's just identical. Everything just works out the same. So, uh, so again, one finds there are four independent um, uh, functions for each psi one and uh, psi two. Okay. <clears throat> so now, uh, so now coming back to Ian's question. Uh, so we have constructed all these modes. Now, are all these modes here or not? Okay. So in order to check this, we have to do a smoothness check. Uh, are the deformations smooth near the horizon? Um, and the way we do this is that we define suitable coordinates and uh, we check whether the whether the perturbations are smooth across the horizon or not. Uh, we have to check whether the modes preserve supersymmetry. That is to say, no additional supersymmetry is broken by the deformation. Um, and um, in particular, is the killing spinner analysis affected by the deformations? Uh, and then we check whether the solutions, whether the hair are supported only outside the horizon or are they supported inside the horizon. Um, uh, for each of the smooth deformations, we find that they vanish uh, at the horizon. Okay, so this is a detailed uh, check that one has to do. And uh, 
I don't know how much time I have to explain all of this. So, um, I think I will skip over the details. Uh, but these are the these are the uh, culprits, <laughs> so to say. So Garfinkel Vachaspati deformation for 5D black hole does not give rise to proper hair. All the hair modes turn out to be singular. For the 4D black hole, they turn out to be smooth. Uh, for the form fields, uh, because the, there is no analog of omega Tn for flat space, so this discussion is not applicable. And for the 4D black hole, for each tensor multiplet, there is a deformation that one can construct. Uh, for fermions, uh, the discussion is identical between 4D and 5D, and one finds the same amount of hair in 4D and 5D. So, as I was saying, there is really no difference for the fermion sector in uh, 4D and 5D. Okay. Uh, Amitav? Yeah. Uh, what is not clear to me, okay, even if I grant that all these properties are satisfied, why should the partition function actually factorize? I mean, at the leading order, yes say at a one loop level, but is it obvious that there would be a clean separation of these two in supergravity? How, how, how do we make guarantee that there's a factorization at higher orders too or? Well, okay. So what I want to emphasize here is that you see in all this discussion, you are, you are asking from the supergravity side, no? From the supergravity side. Okay, I, because you haven't discussed the microscopic side, but the same question can also be asked there. Doesn't it follow at the moment? That that these deformations are independent. Yeah. So one thing is that these deformations are- Well, the... that is at the level of classical equations, right? That's a level of classical equations. I understand that they actually are independent, but once I put quantum fluctuations on top, how do I know that the partition functions will factorize? This is a, a static met. I mean, I mean, it's a metric which is stationary, no? Okay, the quantum. No, is it? It is a time dependence in the no. That's if the v is x five plus t or something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, so there is time dependent. But what I wanted to say is that you see what is important is that arbitrary functions are coming here. Uh, so once you have these arbitrary functions, you can do this zero mode quantization uh, kind of thing, um, mode quantization for for these ones. And um, and this will give rise to um, I mean one can I mean if if you if you want to use PFT language you can construct a Fox space for these uh, uh, for these uh, uh, excitations on the S one and uh, this will give you uh, uh, no no I think what you're trying to say at the classical level the action basically has two parts you can uh, split it into some the contribution of the action coming from the horizon and or from the horizon like region and then something from outside. So that's the natural split, like because the support of these solutions are anyway outside and the action, it can only contribute to S, S will split into two parts, S1 plus S2, where S1 is simply the black hole entropy kind of thing and the S2 would be that uh, whatever the hair contributes. But what is not clear to me at the level of quantum fluctuations, you could make such a split, that's all. This I don't know how to, how to usefully answer. Um, Okay, what I was going to say is that you see that all these perturbations that we have constructed, there are arbitrary functions. And, um, and uh, as Suresh was saying, all these are independent also. So you can think of adding whichever number of modes you want to put. So you can put one mode here. No, this I understand. This I understand, Amitabh. Okay, and I understand because they're all supported. They are independent. They are like, they're, they disfactorize at the classical level. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, these three conditions should be good enough. To, to be con to be convincing people that these are like contributing the index and they are this factorization of the indices yeah so no that that is clear but yeah but it, it's yeah. just what is not clear to me that what's a clear separation between these two uh, like black hole and hair at at, uh, at at the level of like a, a partition function of super like for example if I take this sense approach of quantum entropy function how how one can yeah, yeah. I mean, so, how, how to do this? I mean, how to really make this distinction? Yeah, yeah. At, exactly. at, at beyond uh, leading order. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I can just make a comment. I, I don't know how to do that calculation. Uh, so, in sense, uh, quantum entropy function, what one does is that one looks at ADS2 region and uh, one does uh, uh, like uh, uh, path integral calculation in the ADS2 with the ADS2 boundary conditions. Now, since all these modes, they vanish at the horizon, they are all supported outside the ADS2 region. So if one does the sense quantum, compu quantum computation, one will only find the, the, 
the partition function, which is sort of uh, like the denoted by this black circle, well, we will not see the, the blue lines. So basically what you are saying, we should put some kind of a cutoff in, inside the solution and do separate uh, path integrals and then glue them or something of that. Yeah, kind. Exactly. exactly. This, or, is, this is the picture. But, but still that is not clear how the, how the factorization works, right? Because you can have in the intermediate level, you can have contributions from many, in, uh, okay, anyway. I mean, okay, there should be some uh, explanation I, yeah. of this. Maybe okay. I'll give you a microscopic com uh, comment on the, from the microscopic side. So, uh, so what happens is that uh, this, uh, if you do the, uh, you have contributions from single centered black holes and two centered black holes, okay, for the n equal to four case. And uh, these guys, which are here, effectively come from two centered guys. Right? Okay, and uh, so the charges are related to this circle. See on the right hand side. So, so the objects that we will find will be electrically charged or whatever under that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, so I have prepared some slides explaining more about the table, but I think I will skip those slides. So, or Ian, what do you suggest? Uh, because already it's uh, ten twenty eight. And I don't want to go on forever. Yeah, you 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 have like five seven minutes more. You can uh, then. The... Okay. So what I will yeah I think it's a good idea. So I think I will skip over over the over the details of this table. Okay. So I hope uh, people agree with me that uh, this table uh, can be checked. So I have some 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 discussion on this. So I will just come here. <clears throat> okay. So 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 skipping over the details of this uh, analysis, uh, explicit construction of here modes for both 4D and 5D black holes is possible, and the the spectrum looks like this. So for 5D black hole, we don't find any bosonic hair, zero uh, hair, and we find four fermionic hair. Uh, for the 4D black hole, because of this uh, tensor multiplet uh, discussion, we find uh, n t number of uh, uh, of hair. And uh, because of this three Garfinkel Vachaspati discussions, we find uh, three modes uh, here. So NT plus three, this NT plus three will play the most important role in the rest of the discussion. Um, uh, so this is, see, see, so, so if we go back to that picture, uh, this is the blue wavy lines. Um, and these, these four were the lines which I did not draw. Okay, so this data will be useful in the index calculation. And do other here exist? Uh, we don't know the answer to that question. As I was explaining earlier, we don't know the answer to that question. The above here, this, this table is enough for our analysis, whether there are more here or not. This is all tied up with the kind of questions Ian is asking uh, about the, the string partition function in the ADS2 region. Uh, all that is unknown uh, at, at this point. Okay, so now um, uh, I will move on to the last parts of my talk. Actually, this part of the talk is relatively small. Um, yeah, because I wanted to focus more on that uh, aspect. Actually, this 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 part of the talk I have given in the Chennai Strings meetings also. So 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 let me begin by Chennai Strings meeting 2018. Uh, so during my talk on the construction of hair mode. Uh, Suresh commented that the hair partition function is closely related to the half VPS partition function. And um, uh, half VPS partition function for pre-T compactification is uh, one over eta to the 24. And um, uh, I never had <laughs> this perspective till Suresh explained me. And uh, indeed, uh, essentially this is what Sen et al uh, had done. I mean, they had explained this eta to the 24 from the hair analysis. And if we go back to our previous slide, then we see that the number of extra bosonic hair modes for the 4D black hole are NT plus three and NT in the case of K3 compactification is 21. So indeed, uh, this is 21 plus three, which is what this uh, 24 uh, is, uh, is about. Okay, so uh, this, this perspective uh, that Suresh gave me, this really uh, changed uh, the way we thought about uh, uh, the project and uh, so on. Uh, so now for the CHL models, um, uh, so let me say a few things about the CHL models, some elementary things. So CHL stands for uh, these three authors. Um, and what it really stands for is the orbifold models, uh, which were constructed by these three authors. The key features, the key feature of this model is that they have smaller number of vectors. Uh, that is the main idea. 
um, uh, so in the previous in the previous case they were 21 tensor multiplet these models have lesser number of uh, uh, of uh, tensor multiplets um, uh, lesser number of uh, vectors uh, depending on which perspective you take suresh prefers the 40 perspective i prefer the 60 perspective because i have i, I have much more intuition in 60 whereas suresh really thinks in 40 um, uh, then the k3 compactification uh, and but all these models have the same same amount of supersymmetry these models are obtained by orbifolds of type 2b theory and the way we have to do this is that we have to do some sort of orbifold on k3 and then there is some action on the s1 uh, also so the orbifold group generated by g uh, acts on the elements of the cohomology of k3 uh, on the self dual and anti self dual harmonic forms of k3 and the action also involves uh, shift along the along the s1 okay so now uh, to obtain the lower dimensional supergravity description um, we only keep the g invariant uh, fields the fields which uh, do not change under the orbifold action and since we only keep the g invariant field we only see the g invariant here so if we repeat all the hair analysis we will only see the g invariant uh, here and this was the puzzle that we were stuck with for I don't know how many months. <laughs> so say take the Z4 CHL model and the number of tensor multiplets for this model is seven. Um, so using our analysis, we will only find 10, uh, 10 here, NT plus three, 10 here. But then the here partition function, uh, which is uh, according to the uh, Chennai strings missing 2008, uh, 2018 discussion should be the half PPS partition function, which is this function, uh, eta to the four, eta two rho squared and eta four rho to the four. So how in the world are we going to get <laughs> from this discussion to this discussion? This is where we were stuck. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I have a yeah. basic question. So in the previous slides, let's say that NP was a number of sort of harmonic forms on tau nut is that correct it's, it's related to it's related to so, and so for the k3 case this is simply the number of harmonic forms uh, for uh, for the chl models uh, one has to look at the invariant certain invariant uh, harmonic forms under the orbifold action yes oh, i see now i just want to understand how how that relates i mean for in tau nut space uh, I didn't really understand how. No, there's how no turbinate. Don't think of turbinate. It's just harmonic forms on K3. Yeah, yeah. So that this discussion is not related. Actually, in the CHL model, you can talk about five-dimensional CHL model, or you can talk about four-dimensional CHL model. So at this stage, the discussion really does not uh, distinguish between 4D and 5D. Yeah. So this is the reason I prefer to think in six dimensions. So, so this was a big uh, topic of discussion for our collaboration. Uh, I try to write the whole paper in 60 language and Suresh tried to convert many of those things in the 4D language. Uh, uh, but yeah, but uh, I, I really prefer to think the CHL model in the 60. Actually, they are really 10 dimensional models, but it's simpler to think in terms of 60 uh, models, 60 uh, fields. Uh, and then um, uh, depending on whether you have top nut or not top nut, you can talk about 4D versus 5D uh, black holes. So, so this NT real doesn't have anything to do with harmonic forms on top nut space. Yeah, yeah. The NT has nothing to do with, yeah. NT has nothing to do with the harmonic forms on top nut. Yeah, this is really about harmonic forms in K3. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, so this was the puzzle that we sort of got stuck with uh, uh, at the end of uh, uh, 2019, one can say also. Uh, so then, um, what is the what is the resolution of this puzzle, and how did we uh, uh, go about this? Um, okay, so 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 I will explain the resolution of this puzzle for the uh, Z2 model first, and then I will explain for the Z4 model. Okay, so uh, so let us schematically denote y to be the k3 directions and x to be the remaining uh, six directions. Okay, so uh, all the all the directions that I have discussed so far, they were all in six dimensions. So those were all, those are now all denoted with x. Okay, and the directions that I have not discussed so far, these are the k3 directions, these are y. Okay, so now in 10 dimensions, the raymond raymond four form field is schematically decomposes as a C4, which is a truly 10 dimensional object, which knows about K3 as well as about the six dimensions, it decomposes in this form. So, this is the part which is coming from the fields that we uh, work with the supergravity fields. 
and this is the harmonic forms on the on the K3. These are the harmonic forms on K3. Okay, and this was discussed by these authors in 95. Okay. So we are uh, so as, as I said earlier, so as I said just now, where these are the self-dual or anti-self-dual harmonic forms on K3, uh, and these are the supergravity fields, massless supergravity fields that we see in in our six-dimensional uh, description or ten-dimensional description. Okay, so uh, on the elements of the cohomology of K3, the orbifold group X, and in this case, because I am talking about the Z2 model, the orbifold group of order two X. Okay, so the way it acts is the following. We have to understand the details of how this uh, group acts. So the way it acts is that uh, um, under this action, there are eight anti-cell dual uh, harmonic forms, which have eigenvalue minus one. Uh, so the decomposition works like this. The H11 of uh, K3 is 20. It decomposes as one plus 19. So one is the cell dual form and 19 are the anti-cell dual form. And this 19 further splits into uh, 11 plus 8. So 11 are the ones, 11 are the two forms which are left invariant under the Z2 action, and 8 are the one form which uh, which pick up this uh, eigenvalue minus one under the under the. Uh, so so sorry, I'm the little little stupid question. So this eigenvalue could be either minus one or one, right? This is the Z2. We're talking eigenvalue under Z2. Yeah, eigenvalue under Z2. So the so we are talking about uh, eigenvalues for the anti cell dual harmonic forms, and there are 19 of them, and uh, 11 have plus eigenvalue and 8 have minus eigenvalue. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now, uh, so now we can fix all this uh, once we understand that detail. So Z2 model has uh, number of tensor multiplets to be 13. Um, so thus NT plus three, we get 16 here mode, uh, which we uh, sort of construct in our supergravity analysis from the previous part of the talk. Uh, but there are also eight other here modes, which satisfy the boundary condition that if you go around the, uh, the X5 circle, you don't come back to it. You don't come back to um, uh, the C2 itself, but you come back with a minus sign. Okay, so, so if you go back here, uh, so these were the, uh, there were eight uh, harmonic form harmonic forms which had eigenvalue minus one. Um, so if you do a, a, a translation on the S1, then these forms will pick a minus sign. Um, and one can compens compensate um, uh, that minus sign by having a boundary condition that if you shift um, uh, X5 by two pi, then you don't come back to itself, but you come back to the uh, same field with a minus sign. Okay, so this was the key um, understanding. And thus we have uh, 16 um, bosonic hair modes with periodic boundary conditions and eight bosonic hair modes with anti-periodic boundary condition. And um, if we just trace through all the factors and numbers and so on, uh, then in correct quantization of charges, the periodic mode contribute even units of momentum and anti-periodic modes contribute odd units of momentum. And then uh, with this understanding, we can explain uh, everything. So, uh, so here is the calculation. So take Q to be e power two pi i rho, then very roughly, um, there were 16 bosonic modes. Uh, so th th this is what this 16 is about, uh, which had even uh, momentum along the S1. So that's why the Q power uh, two, four, six appears here. Um, and then there were eight uh, bosonic modes, which only allowed for anti-periodic uh, boundary condition on the S1. So they give rise to uh, uh, odd number of uh, momentum, odd units of momentum modes. So Q to the one, Q to the three, Q to the five and so on. And now we can organize this product. Uh, if we just take out uh, um, uh, all the uh, odd and even powers together, then we get one plus one minus Q to the two K to the minus eight. So just taking out the factor of minus eight from this. Um, and what we are left with, um, yeah, yeah, I said it slightly wrong. Okay, so 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 for all powers, q q squared, q three, q four, q five, q six, we collect them here, and then we are left with uh, even powers uh, here: one minus q squared to the minus eight, one minus q power four to the minus eight, and so on. And those things are here. So um, uh, we combine them, and we get uh, eta two rho to the eight, eta rho to the eight. Okay, there are some more details, but the essential idea is uh, as above. And uh, if we indeed get the here partition function to be the half PPS uh, partition function. 
Okay, so this was the the main the main uh, sort of physics idea that we have. I just have a okay, simple so comment from 4D. <laughs> so yeah. from 4D, these objects are magnetically charged objects, and uh, so that's all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And and these uh, these odd and even power decomposition, what they mean from 4D? Uh... Uh, no, it's just some twisted sectors, right? I mean, different twisted. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's yeah. All. So, so yeah, actually, ah, there's twisted sectors. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. actually, this is very cute, which Amitabh et al. Yeah, Amitabh and uh, Shandurupriya came up with. I mean, this is uh, that you are implementing. Uh, so, so this is where in the 6D perspective, you are implementing twisted sectors in some sense in supergravity. That's really cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, I must say the 6D versus 10D discussion. Uh, I am not still completely happy with. I would like to really think of the hair as uh, tendy hair uh, because I, I really want to use this formula as uh, as our uh, as our uh, uh, hair mode. Sixty or four D, yeah. probably four. Uh, tendy is correct. Tendy is better. Yeah, tendy is better. Yeah. Actually, there was a confusion with the referee also in our paper. Yeah. I I prefer tendy. But... Okay, so now uh, I am towards the end. So the calculation works for all geometric CHL model. And uh, for example, for the Z4 model, um, I will just show the so show some details. Um, so there are ten modes with the no twist, uh, four modes with the quarter twist, uh, six modes with the half twist, and uh, four modes with three quarter uh, twist. Okay. So once you take all this information into account, so you see these are these tens. Uh, these tens are coming from the no twist mode and they should be quantized in uh, units of four. So Q to the four, Q to the eight, Q to the 12. Um, and uh, okay. And uh, uh, the three twist, the three quarter twist are, are these ones. The half twist are these ones and uh, uh, single twist are uh, these ones. Okay, so now um, uh, if you have patience and energy still left, you can go through this uh, calculation and you can convince yourself that this is how it will get organized. So all the integer powers, you can sort of collect them uh, here. Uh, and then you will, left with, you will be left with the uh, difference of uh, two and six here. Uh, the twos you can collect here and the remaining four, you can collect them here. And this is how you will get. Uh, why it. there is no multiple of three here? Huh? Each a three row to something. Uh... No, all all the twists. Ah, because all of these could be okay. It's a okay. I see. Yeah. All, ah, all... sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got it. Yeah. And this is what will give you this uh, eta to the four, eta two row, three square, eta four row. Yeah. Okay. So we indeed get the half EPS uh, partition function. Okay. So this is all. Uh, so let me just end. So for CHL models, the puzzle of 4D versus 5D index mismatch is more challenging uh, due to the presence of the twisted sectors. Uh, we identify here modes in the untwisted as well as twisted sector. Uh, we show that after removing the contributions of the here modes from the microscopic partition function, the 4D and 5D horizon partition functions uh, agree. So this point that whether we have actually got the 4D and 5D horizon part partition function, this can be debated because of the discussion that uh, we had just now with Ayan. Um, um, most likely this is the correct partition function, but we don't have a clear understanding of, uh, of this. Uh, special care is taken to present details on the smoothness analysis of the hair modes for rotating black holes, and thereby we filled an important gap in the literature. I, I, I did not explain this uh, in detail because this requires uh, some more discussion. Okay, so now we have a work in progress. Uh, so this is uh, twisted twining partition functions. So using the ideas which are central to the CHL model, um, i.e. orbifolding by the abelian group, uh, one can define a richer class of uh, partition functions. So these partition functions are called twisted twining partition functions. Uh, this was done uh, among, this was done by Ashok Sen in 2010 and uh, Suresh Kovid in 2010. Uh, there are more papers on this. The only time where I actually, uh, Ashok was my competition in my whole life. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, uh, the, the 4D and 5D counting are known for these uh, partition functions also, and a very similar hair removal story can be done for these uh, for this case. So this is something we are working on with Abhishek Chaudhary, Sutapa Samanta, 
Shanmuga Priya and uh, Suresh Kobutraja. So hopefully we will finish this paper in some time. And thank you. Uh, thank you, Amita, for this great talk. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so, so some questions from students, especially. Yeah, maybe uh, we should make it uh, that they have to at least ask one question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, in that case, since there are no further question, uh, let's thank Amitav again and uh, see you next week. The next week, the talk will be again at the same time, 9.30 a.m. It okay. would be on uh, fracton hydronomics. Hope to see you. Yeah, the speaker would be Paul Glorioso from Stanford. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Okay, bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.